to wait. Lord, if you leave me, I know that I, I won't stray. I'm asking you, Lord, let me walk each day in thee. Oh, lead me, oh, Lord. I want you to lead. you to leave me oh Lord lead cause where you lead me I will follow where you lead Where you lead me, I, I'll follow. Oh, yes, I will. I'll go with him, with him. Oh, all the way. All the way, 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 all the way. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus tonight. Oh, somebody, you can do better than that. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am more than honored and counted a privilege to be in this building tonight to give honor to whom honor is due I honor the apostle of this house Apostle John H. Boyd Sr. Love you tonight Pastor I love you tonight and to Elder Boyd and to all of the saints of God, to Mother Boy, to Dr. Johnson, and, and Valerie, and everybody that's represented in the house tonight, to Dr. Johnson, to Sister Tanya, who I'm going to beat when church is over with. I ain't seen Sister Tanya since she grabbed my neck and almost choked me to death out there in that hallway. But I, I miss seeing you. But God is awesome. He's awesome. And I really, even when Elder Boyd called me on behalf of pastor, and I'm always attempting to be obedient to God, when it comes down to Pastor Boyd, but ever since I have come back from Africa, and um, on my way back to Africa again in South America, I've been really meticulous and very cautious as to where I stand to minister 
And I was speaking to Elder Boyd even about it because of the way that the Lord has transitioned me. It's somewhat <clears throat> a little different, but the way the Lord has transitioned me and dealt with me about the call of God, that is upon my life. Sometimes we are moving in the things of God and being uh, especially as obedient as we can possibly be, but not really having the full clarity of who God has called you to be and what God has called you to do. And so sometimes we, we move because the Bible said we know in part and we prophesy in part. And so as we began our journey, sometimes we don't know the depth of where God is trying to take us. And we end up for years spending a lot of time uh, even in realms that God has called you beyond. And so when you're not careful, you will get caught up in the excitement of where you are and not move on to where God is trying to take you. And then you'll find yourself being challenged not to move into that place because it becomes an uncomfortable place for people that are around you. And then that's when you know that it's time for God to change your surroundings because time waits for nobody. Somebody said time waits for nobody. And when you know that you are in the timing of God, you got to move in what God is saying. Because at that particular time, a window is open in the spirit for God to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And we are in the season, and I was explaining that in morning prayer, Pastor Boyd, that we are not in the season of God waiting on the people to believe him. We are in the season where God is going to do what he's going to do until we it causes us to believe God oh I don't hear nobody saying nothing because we're not gonna pretend like we like we have the faith to believe that God is going to do it that's why Peter said Lord help my unbelief but the Lord said that the spirit of the fear of the Lord is coming back in the sanctuary and I'm not just talking about fear meaning afraid I'm talking about fear from the Hebrew translation the awe of God God is getting ready to do something that is so incredible and so awesome in your life until it's going to put you in awe of God and the Bible said when we get into the fear of the Lord it's the beginning of knowledge which means when God blows my mind then I'm gonna start knowing who God really is somebody come on give God a praise right there touch your neighbor and you got to check your surroundings tonight because I text my I text my sound man and I said I came to have church all by myself you better text somebody next to you and tell them God give me to put you in awe and he give me to blow your mind and he ain't even asking you to believe it when he went to the tomb to get Lazarus he didn't ask Lazarus to have faith he called him by his name and all he wanted him to do was to respond and if God can get a respond out of anybody tonight he will blow your natural mind somebody give God a shout in this place my God my God Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. As I began to prepare, and I did not take coming to Bethel lightly as I have not done for the 5 a.m. prayer, and those that have been coming to the 5 a.m. prayer know that God has been doing something quite different quite different and quite spectacular and understanding that we are just not people that are in the presence of the Lord being redundant about what it is we want God to do but the season of the Lord is in the areas of particulars and the timing of God mother boy God is dealing now and the world has gone back into a circular and time is according to the book of Ecclesiastes time is in rotation and so now that we are in the hour of the prophetic God is taking the office of the prophetic back to the old times of the scripture where well, this would not be the hour of the prophets where they would prophesy houses and cars but it would be the times of the prophets that they would prophesy destinies and seasons and realms and dimensions I'm not hearing nobody talk to me 
They will prophesy the fact that we know the position like the sons of Issachar what God is saying and how he is saying it which means that tonight I'm going to attempt to show you that if you are in this building tonight it was on the divine calendar of God that you be here and that after being here your life will never be the same somebody said my life will never be the same somebody say it again my life will never be the same October the 19th 2010 and I have to go back to this October the 19th 2010 I had a supernatural experience in God I was walking in my kitchen and I went to turn around to do something and pastor when I turned around there was a cloud in my kitchen and the Spirit of the Lord said go and get a pad and a pen and this is the very pad that I use and at 6 35 p.m. the Lord took me up in the spirit and I began to write and from October 10th the 19th at 6 35 p.m. the Lord began to chart me all the way to 2012 he began to tell me that even my era of what I was doing in the prophetic had ended and God was getting ready to take me to another dimension in the time zone of God and he said this would be the season that the people of God would know the mind of God we would not just be in church praising God but we would know the mind of God we would know the divine intelligence and knowing that the Holy Ghost is just not goosebumps but the Holy Ghost and the power of God is a divine intelligent spirit that desires to know and help us to know the hidden and the mysteries of God which means no matter what we are facing and what we are looking at when we tap the mind of God he will tell us that beyond what I see beyond what I inhale God beyond what I I hear I know what the Lord is saying about my situation and the Bible said he knows the thoughts that he thinks about me and they are good and not evil and tell somebody he's about to give you your expected in he's about to give us our expected in just want to see who I'm talking to tonight he's about to give us our expected in so when I begin to chart this I want you to hear this he took me to 2010 and so he said I want you to start in the book of Genesis and he took me up in the spirit and I went to the book of Genesis and I went from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation and as I begin to read and I have pages here that everywhere I went in the Bible where it was Genesis 10 10 and then it was Judges 10 10 and it kept landing on God speaking prophetically we were also talking about charting it and he said I'm going to chart you to 2011 and 12 when I got to the book of Revelation 10 10 it talked about eating the scroll but then he said that Revelations 10 and 11 was a scripture that was going to connect 2010 and 2011 when I got to Revelation 10 and 11 according to God in 2011 the scripture said it was time now for us to make a fresh prophecy which means that God was going to give the people of God during the season of 2011 to prophesy your destiny that no matter what the devil had done in your life if you would dare to open up your mouth and begin to decree something else oh I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing nobody he said respond you ain't got to believe it he said make a fresh prophecy in other words start your mind all over again start your life all over again start your destiny all over again if the devil say you broke open up your mouth and begin to prophesy said you're gonna die I shall not die but I shall live to declare that I can't get nobody in here but I I shall live to declare the glory my God of the living God in other words I shall not be shaken and why is it that I should not be shaken because the Bible said that if I decide if I decide
decree of faith that God is going to establish it for me. My job is to speak it. And when I speak it, the power of God is obligated to perform it. Tell somebody he's doing something for me right now. Oh, you ain't said it like you mean it. I said tell somebody he's doing something for me right now. No, tell them he's fixing something for me right now. Because tell them, neighbor, you don't know what I said to the Lord this morning. You don't know what I said to the Lord in my car. You don't know what I said to God last week. You don't know what I said to God last month. And I'm here to tell you that every since I prophesied, my job is to praise him every time I feel the power of God. Because it's my indication and my witness that God is moving on my behalf. Somebody say he's moving. Oh, somebody say he's moving. Y'all said that like y'all mean it a little bit. Y'all said it like y'all, like y'all mean it a little bit. But he really moving. He really moving. He really moving. Ever since she said make a fresh prophecy, I did it in our church and every everything. Even today when I called back home, they said the testimony line was wrapped around the church of people getting houses and cars and being healed from AIDS and all kinds of cancers and tumors. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. He said what's wrong is we're waiting for God to do it. And God said I've already done it. I'm waiting for you to prophesy. I'm waiting for you to call into the third realm. Pull it down. Oh, tell somebody I gotta pull it down. Tell somebody, excuse me tonight, but I got to pull it down. I'm in the timing of God. I got to pull it down. The power of God is in the building. I got to pull it down. I gotta pull it down. Sit down. Sit down. Let me. Somebody just give him a shout right quick. I, good Lord, have mercy. Somebody. Somebody give him a shout right quick. I'm not, I ain't talking to church people. I'm talking to prophetic people. I'm talking to people to know. Hey, Shaka, Hindi, and the I'm talking to people that understand that when I open up my mouth and I begin to shout, it's a signal that I'm sending to heaven that God. I'm responding. I'm responding. But wait, I'm responding. So, what am I? Watch this. What am I responding to? Watch this. What am I responding to? He said, 2011, 2010, Revelation 10 and 11 connects the scripture. Now watch this. It said it connects the scripture. He said, now I'm getting ready to charge you to 2012. When I got past it to Revelation this is going to make sense to this building, to the church, to pastor, to all of us in here. When I got to the book of Revelation and Revelation 10 and 11, the Bible cross-referenced me back to the birth certificate of the prophetic. And the birth certificate of the prophetic said this. The birth certificate of the prophetic is the book of Jeremiah when he said, before I formed you in your I'm not talking to everybody in here but I'm talking to somebody before I formed you in your mother's womb I knew you I called you y'all said well I, I ain't going to the world of course he gave you the power to prophesy to the world he said I called all grace to abound toward you that means God has tilted the world in your direction and all you got to do is prophesy somebody said prophesy somebody said prophesy somebody said prophesy so what do you mean all I got to do is prophesy so when he took me there, Elder Boyd, and he took me to the birth certificate of the prophetic, the 10th verse, watch this, let's go to this, I'm going to show you something, because I don't want this to be something that I said, he took me to this, he said Jeremiah 1 and 10, Pastor Boyd would represent 2010, he said, see, I have this day appointed you to the oversight of the nations and of the kingdoms to root out and pull down, to destroy, and to overthrow, to build, and to plant. When 
which means that if you are sitting in the era now of 2011 this is so something which means the scripture of of watch this one in ten have already been applied to your life Jesus the reason why the devil could not destroy you and you are here is because somewhere in your life you put down somewhere in your life you root it up y'all ain't saying that and the reason why God is getting ready to blow your mind is because you planted something somewhere tell somebody I planted something I planted something tell somebody I planted something now, now, now some people think about that as being think about that as um as being money let me make that plain I planted something I planted a praise when I didn't feel like it I planted a prayer when I didn't feel like prayer oh y'all ain't say tell somebody he getting ready to pay me he getting ready to pay me now hey Shia I'm about to get my harvest for real no this ain't no this ain't no hocus pocus prophecy this is the scripture oh Shia somebody give God a shout for 2010 oh no Wait, 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 2000, 2010. Now, Elder Boyd, he brings me to 2011. 2011 says, the 11th verse, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch or a shoot of an almond tree, the emblem of alertness and activity blossoming in late winter he said to me then that even us being here during this time is prophetic because it is only the prophet that is able to see it is only a pastor boy that is able to see that in the winter time you get ready to get your harvest when most people think it's supposed to come in the summer and in the spring y'all ain't saying that but in the winter time while it's cold God is causing something to blossom with your name on it I just need 21 people to go to praise him right now he said he said wait wait he, he said wait a minute wait a minute Wait a minute, he said, he said, I said, so what are you saying? He said, it is only those that are in the realm of the prophetic that can see. Y'all ain't saying that. Something budding in the winter time. I'm not hearing nobody. He said, it's not by chance that you all have had this service today. Y'all ain't in the beginning seasons of the winter months. Y'all not saying that because before I take it back, I will throw in my license that before March comes, we are going to see the hand of God like we have never seen it before because this is the season of the prophetic word. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, sit down. Let me, let me make this point. Let me make this point. But let me make this. The teached, the teached word is a seasonal word. Watch this. The teach word. And, and, and that's when God, elder boy, starts saying to me, no, you got to walk in the real prophetic anointing. He said the teach word of God is a seasonal word of God. What people say, well, it's your season and it's your season for this and it's your season for that he said but not the order of the prophetic the prophetic is the only anointing that can break and interrupt a season I'm not hearing y'all talk to me in other words it is the prophetic anointing of an individual that can be sitting in their darkest hour and still got a praise coming out of their pillow because that person can see that Something is blossoming in my winter season. In my, in my, in my, wait, in my, I can't see my way season. Well, why is you shouting? Why is you praising God? Because I know I was just talking to you on the phone. So what, what you giving God praise for? Because in my religion, 
it don't look like it's happening but in the prophetic y'all come on I can see something that is blossoming with my name on it with my name on it what wait 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 a minute are y'all with my name on it with my name on it when everybody wearing boots and coats and and they say you know it ain't good season for oranges and peaches and I mean we in New York City you know it ain't no season to grow no cherries and no oranges and nothing because everything else was already grown and is sitting on the shelf but it's a new fruit oh my god it's a new fruit it's something that the shelf in the church haven't seen yet I'm not giving y'all the kind of stuff that God is about to do in the lives of those that understand the blossoming in the winter season it's going to be stuff that the church ain't never seen before what God is about to do in you it ain't never happened before oh I, I got it I got three people to believe that. Jerry, I got three people to believe that. That it ain't, it ain't never happened before. And that's why you got to live by the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, the second chapter when it says, you got to get away from everybody negative. You got to get away from everybody that's complaining. You got to get away from everybody. I'm not hearing y'all. You got to get away from everybody. The Bible said that has a bad influence. Somebody that don't believe God. Somebody that's stuck in their way. You got to separate yourself because something is about to happen for you. I'm not hearing you. It may not happen for your friend. It may not happen for your mama. Y'all better come over here and give God a prayer. I'm talking. Tell somebody me. Me. He talking. He talking to me. He talking. Wait. No, no. Sit down. I got uh, Elder Morgan. He talking. Uh, God, you was in my spirit today. And I saw you just praising God. He said, he talking to me. He talking to me. That's why I can't wait for the church to praise God. That's the reason why you take a run to the back of the church when ain't nobody else shouting. Because you can hear the prophetic saying, I'm blossoming something. You better give me a shout. I'm blossoming into the winter. Wait, wait. It's in the... Wait. Wait. Wait a minute, I gotta sit down for a second. I'm almost finished. It's in the, he didn't just say it's in the winter. Tell somebody, it's gonna be late. Who y'all is? Y'all, elder boy, you can't even get people to pray. Tell them it's gonna be late. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be late winter. Y'all, y'all looking at me. Y'all looking at me. It's gonna be, I can tell you when it's gonna be. I can tell you when it's going to be. I can tell you when it's going to start. It's going to start because the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah the 12th verse says. That now that you have rooted up and planted. And he said now that it's blossoming. He said it was this. 2012. It's going to be the year. What the Bible said. I'm going to watch over my word. To perform it. I'm going to do everything I said. Yo. I just wish somebody would understand. Wait. 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 How does that sit down? How does that relate to us? Let me calm down. How do Elder Boy, Pastor, how does that relate to us? Sister Tanya, Beanie, how does that? Dr. John, how, can, how does all of that relate to us? Okay. Let me tell you how. Because when he took me up in the spirit today and he said I want you to read this and I started reading he said 2012 he said 2011 was the year when people were supposed to make a fresh prophecy he said then tell the people that for the prophetic anointing and for churches and ministries that operate under prophetic watch night service for you is November the 30th at 12 o'clock midnight because at 12 o'clock midnight you will enter into the 12th month which will start the new season of the prophetic because the 12 means I'm going to establish what I said y'all ain't hearing me the number 11 means it has not been fulfilled yet but I you to say it because when you get to December 1 if I be a woman of God stuff is about to break somebody better give God a shot you better give God a shot I said December 1 
in this. Y'all, I wish I had somebody. We just a few days, a few days, and I'm not talking about next month. I'm talking about Friday. Y'all better get. Oh my God! Somebody come out here. Somebody come out here. Friday. Friday. It's a new year. Friday. I got it. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't saying that. He said just like Heshadosha. He said just like Elijah and Elisha went through the time of transfiguration when Elijah said to Elisha, if you there when I'm transformed I'm going to drop the mantle and the Holy Ghost told me to tell everybody that I come in contact with have your eyes set on 12 o'clock because when December come at 1201 there will be a transfer I'm not giving y'all somebody better open your mouth and praise God because I know what I'm talking about come on here somebody Come on here, somebody. Wait, I'm going to prove it. Sit down, because I got to prove it some more. Elder Morgan, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it to you. Elder Boyd, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. Because God gave me this. As to the reason why we in the middle of it in this building. Why we, oh Shia, will be the first recipients. Y'all stop playing with me. No, this ain't no joke. This ain't no joke. So what he did was, he said, all right, they asked you to come and preach on the 27th. And he said, I want you to look this up. And he said, Elder Morgan, I'm going to read this to you. It said that the number 20 represent the threefold phases of a man. It said that the number 20 represent the goods, the three goods of the threefold phases of a man. From infancy to 10 years old, it happens for the person for the good. He said the number 10 getting to 10 years old declares the good that is on a person's life. He said when you double that from 10 years old to 20 years old, it represents the good of the ignorance of man, which means that everything that we did in the first 20 years of your ministry that we were ignorant in, God still favored us. I'm not giving nobody to talk to me that the favor of God never left us because the prophetic word promises the good in our ignorance. Okay. 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 So the third phase, Elder Morgan, of the man is when he reaches 20 and beyond it is the intelligence of man it is the good that he will receive based upon the instructions from his intelligence y'all come on here then I looked at the word seven and the saints say seven means God's perfect number but when I looked it up it said seven was a twofold number seven also meant vastation vastation means that the number seven that half of seven means everything that had tormented you everything that had kept you hindered everything that had kept you bound at the number seven got to let you go and at the same time Everything that's regenerated, new cells, new bones, new vision, new growth. I'm not giving y'all. I'm not giving y'all. So, so wait a minute. So what am I saying? So what am I saying? Today, today, the threefold good of man and the vestation and the regeneration is taking place in this building. Which means everything that have tormented this ministry is being another y'all don't have to believe it. It's being nullified before 12 o'clock midnight according to God's word. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm talking about by 12 o'clock midnight. 
New Great Apostle is going to turn into a new ministry. I'm talking about y'all like it. New Great Apostle. New Great Apostle. New Great Apostle. New. It's in your name. It's in the name. Regeneration. It's going to start. Oh. Oh. Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He watches over his word to perform it. 27, which means in every phase of our lives, we're getting ready. All right, Lord. We're getting ready to be delivered and renewed. But wait a minute. And Dr. Morgan, when I looked it up, regeneration, regeneration in the Bible dictionary, it said this reference is especially referred to economics. Now y'all ain't got to shout. Which means money is going to be changed tonight. No, y'all don't hear me. Which means it wasn't by chance that y'all had this service on the 27th. No, y'all better hear me. And God said all I need in the building is for somebody that belongs to this ministry to go to shouting. No, y'all ain't got to believe it. You ain't got to believe it. Wait, wait a minute. So he said, Elder Boyd, stay right there, y'all. The number 12 is the establishment. And if you decide a thing, it shall be established for you. Everybody with me right there? So I'm sitting at the counter and I'm reading, I'm reading, and I'm reading the Bible and the Love Express paper is laying on the counter and I opened up the Love Express paper and I just started flipping through it and I saw the ad for the anniversary and it said 39, he said 3 plus 9 is 12. He said, I said, I'm establishing what you are prophesying in this house. I said that not only does 3 plus 9 equal 12, but we are entered into the 12th month. We are going into the month of government. I'm not hearing y'all. We are going into the month that you ain't got to pray about it no more. We are going into the month that if you don't already spoken, all you got to do is praise God because he's about to babysit it. He's about to watch over his word. He going to tell the devil, take your hands up. You ain't got to rebuke the enemy. I'm not giving nobody. I just wish somebody would go to praise and God. Your days of rebuking the devil. It's over. God said this is the season that you're going to step into everything that he has promised. I said everything. Elder Boyd, I said everything. I said everything. I said everything. Some of y'all, I said everything. No, it was so deep until today. I was supposed to be at my church because we were moving. We were moving out of our old church. And we were going into a new church and this was going to be our last Sunday. And they said, you're going to miss the last Sunday of being here. And I said, but no, I got to go to Bethel. The last Sunday of us exiting the old and going into the new. And then I sat there and thought about that thing. And I said, wait a minute. The name of the place that we've been having church at for almost a year was called the 12. And I said, God, maybe, my God, that's why we've been getting so blessed. He said, because you've been sitting in an establishment. He said, now your ministry is walking out of the 12 ballroom. And by next Sunday, we will be in the 12th month in our new church. And then they asked you to come and preach at Bethel where you go back to your foundation where God birthed you out at. And it's the 27th. You can sit here if you want to and act like it's a coincidence. But I promise you, something in this church, it breaks today. Oh my God. Nothing will be the same. Somebody said nothing. Turn around and touch three people and say nothing. 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 
everything, everything, everything. The release has come. The breakthrough has come. The outpouring is here. Somebody better give God a shout. I said you better give him a shout. You better give him a shout. I don't have it. I'm just. I'm just. I'm. Watch this. I said. I said, I said that it was here and it wasn't me that said it. It was the Lord that's confirmed it. And the thing that I'm really, really praising God for the most, y'all ain't saying nothing, that because it's 27, Elder Port, I don't even look at the people that ain't praising God because you don't even have a choice because he's going to bless you in your ignorance anyway. No, I don't, I don't hear y'all talking to me. Y'all come over here, somebody. What I'm trying to tell you, it don't matter if you don't shout. It don't matter if you don't dance. up. But y'all ain't here. You done tapped into something that's about to arrest you. It's going to arrest your mind. It's going to arrest your pet. Y'all ain't giving me. This ain't about your praise. It's about the prophecy. It's about what has been spoken. Somebody give them a shout if you believe it. It's about. It's about. It's about. It's about being present. It ain't about the response. It's about being present. It's about when you leave here Melinda I don't know if they believe that it's about when you leave here stuff start happening and you don't even know how it's happening I'm talking about what I know I'm talking about the dead being raised in my church I'm not hearing y'all I'm talking about them pronouncing a girl dead at 945 and we took a handkerchief and laid it over her face and she coughed and came back to life because the prophetic word had been spoken. I'm talking about another kind of prophetic season. I'm not talking about houses and cars. I'm talking about dimensions. I'm talking about when God speaks a word it goes in your belly not your intellect and it begins to transform everything about you your mind is too small oh, it's too small your mind you know the mind the mind is too small it's like when God starts saying stuff it's hard for your mind to believe it cause your mind only have enough faith as your neighbor sit next to you God I said something right there I said something right there. Your mind only have enough faith as the last person that you heard. I'm not hearing y'all. Your mind is vacillating back and forth with what happened to somebody else. Y'all ain't saying that. I know they died of cancer, but you won't. I'm not hearing y'all. Dr. Biden, why you say that? Because you in this building tonight. I'm not hearing you talk back to me. You don't understand that when God begin to prophesy, he don't prophesy according to your faith. He prophesies according to his will. And this is what he has willed for this church prosperity. Just hit this house. Y'all don't have to believe it. Listen to me. Wait, deliverance. No, I, I, I closed because when I, when I said that, when I said that, I just felt like I was at our church when he said, I'm about to break your nets. And everybody in the church was looking at me like, but I didn't heard that before. I didn't heard the message of Peter. And I'm talking about gangsters. I'm talking about thugs. I'm talking about people that don't even know God. I'm talking about people that said, I ain't even in church like that. But I came to church and that lady said, go to the car lot. And I went to the car lot. And I'm talking about people being given cars and given houses and saying you can have the house. I'm leaving the country. I'm talking about supernatural, supernatural. Oh my shaky I'm talking about supernatural stuff because somebody dared to speak it in the atmosphere. And that's why I came. I came to speak out in the atmosphere that everything that God has promised, it has been. Release somebody.
Somebody give God a shout in here. Somebody give him a shout. It's been. No, it's been. It's, it's been. When I say, Rabina, it's been released. It's been released. Not only has it been released, but other people. God, I love you. Other people is getting ready to get stuff because you was in this building. No, come on, somebody. Other people get ready to have stuff because you was in this building. I remember when I went to the car lot a few weeks ago and my sister went with me and I told this in prayer and she was sitting there and when the lady got through making my deal and I got through closing the deal, she looked at my sister and said, and what you here for? She said, I'm with her. She said, but what you need? She said, no, I'm with her. I said, she need a car. I said, and her credit ain't good. And she don't have no down payment. And the lady looked at her and said, it's something that I sense on you, lady. And because you with her, I'm going to give you a deal. No, you don't hear me. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, because you sit next to me. No, you better act like you believe. Tell somebody. You sit next to the next dimension because you standing next to me. God is about to break something open with your name on it. Somebody give God a shot. Somebody give him a shot. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sit down, I gotta say this. Sit down, I gotta say this. I gotta say this. I gotta say this while y'all sitting down, cause, cause I ain't trying to. I ain't move Jesus. He said, "If I be lifted up, I'll draw." all men unto me all men unto me we so busy sitting in church all these years being the demon chasers and needing a blessing that we don't know when the timing of God has changed that's how church go into stalemate when they don't know the times of the Lord has changed and we don't need a blessing no more mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm. we don't need a blessing no more we are the blessing producers when y'all come on somebody I just want I just need one person maybe I can't get nobody with the blessing producers which means when I show up your blessing just showed up the very fact that you sit next to me something is happening to you when I walk in your beauty shop it just got blessed who am I talking to my God I wish I had some when I get to church I didn't come looking for a blessing I came to release something I came to push something out in the atmosphere because I am I'm the blessing somebody give God a shout in here Watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna sit, sit down for a second. I'm finished. I'm finished. I, I am. I'm. See, something happens in the spirit, Elder Morgan, when you rename yourself the blessing. When you rename yourself the blessing, what you're saying is, I got more than enough resources in me. And if it looks like I'm going low, God is obligated to give seed to the sower because I'm the blessing. Y'all ain't saying that, which means I ain't got to pray for a blessing no more. All I got to do is decree that I am the blessing. I'm not giving you. And every time I look around from the north, south, east, and west, blessings is going to chase me down. Blessings is going to overtake me. Not because I'm asking for it, but because I'm producing it. I'm, I'm, Wait, wait, so, so Beanie, we spend, Dr. Morgan, our whole Christian walk talking to the devil, binding Satan, 
binding the enemy instead of producing the promise. Watch this. When I am the blessing, I am the producer of the blessing. And I made a statement a few minutes ago. If I be lifted up, he gave me a revelation in my head and, I, and in my heart. And the day he gave it to me, I start seeing something happen different. He said, I'll, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I said, all right. People going to be saved. He said, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. That's going to happen too. He said, but didn't you say that you need somebody to give you a loan? I said, yes, Lord. He said, well, if you lift me up, I'll draw the man that's got the loan power in him to me because I got the heart of the king in my hand. I'm not hearing y'all. And he said, what I need people to do is just exalt me above what they need. I'm not hearing. I'm not giving up. What I need people to do is exalt me above what they need. Because when they exalt me above what they need, I'll start drawing the person that got what you need. I'm not giving you. You become a magnet. Who am I preaching to? My God, I wish I had somebody in here that felt like stepping over into another dimension, leaving church and going to power, going to another level. Somebody give God a prayer. I'm not looking for a blessing. I am. Y'all ain't saying I am the blessing. What I just wish somebody would say, I am the blessing. No, say it like you mean I am the blessing. Because when you say I'm the blessing, even as I speak now, resources are coming to you. God have mercy. I told the people the other day, I said, I see land dropping up. I see property dropping up. In this building, y'all don't have to praise God. But I'm telling you right now, the heavens is open up. And everything that you need is dropping in this building. That's all right. The testimony is going to come after tonight. It's going to be miracles. Stop. That ain't never happened before. Somebody give God a shout. See, watch this. The, the, somebody said, well, I heard that before. When the prophet told Naaman to go dip in the Jordan River, he said, that river is dirty. That river is nasty. But the book of Ezekiel, the 47th chapter, said that when God gave me the reed and he told me to measure the temple, he said, I thought I was going to measure furniture, but I started seeing water. And he said, it came up around the feet. And then I went over on another side, came up around the knees and the waist. He said, then the water just began to overflow till I couldn't even measure it. Y'all ain't saying that. And he said, when you begin to preach this word, Hado Shande, in this building, water gonna hit the floor. I see something here. He said, water gonna hit the floor. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And the way some of y'all gonna praise him, you gonna be swimming in it. But I'm here to tell you, if you ain't got enough to swim, you better pet. You better splash in it. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing to me. Because I'm telling you that this water is running up from the book of Ezekiel from the real tabernacle. And this water got healing in it. And this water got deliverance in it. And this water got prosperity in it. And it's time to swim. Somebody open your mouth. It's time to praise him. Somebody God glory. It's time to give him glory. Somebody give him glory. I said it. I prophesied about the water. And he said it ain't going to leave the floor. But Benny, he said it ain't going to leave the floor. He said it ain't going to leave the floor. Y'all ain't saying that. 
He said it ain't going to leave the floor. He said something is about to happen in this ministry and the water is not going to leave the floor. My God from Zion, my God from the testimonies is going to be down that aisle. If I be a woman of God, I see it now because the water done brought in some stuff like it did when Jesus told Peter to cast your net and he said nevertheless at thy word I'm going to drop it again. What kind of net is he talking about tonight? The net of praise. Anybody in here, you that open your mouth and drop your net one more time. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the devil say. I don't care what it is you need. Drop it. Come on here and praise it. Listen, at my church, let me just say this right quick, because I know there's some people in here like that. At my church, other boys, somebody said, well, I came to your church, and uh, they said, I really didn't understand. And I said, why? They said, because that was a little different for me. I said, what you mean? Because when I say praise the Lord, Pastor Boyd, they run to the wall and they beat the wall and they do cartwheels, literal cartwheels. They do push ups, they do floor spins. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm talking about getting on their knees and just spinning around. around. I'm talking about if the music is shouting music, they jump down there at the beat of the shouting music and do push ups, the men do. They run to the wall with their feet and flip over. They do cartwheels all the way across the floor. And then those that are not doing cartwheels, am I lying, Melinda? They beating on the wall. And those that ain't beating on the wall, they standing up in the chairs like they at a baseball field. No, this is at the first, the first, come on, give God praise. That's all I got. No, I ain't even got a shout. I said, come on, everybody, give God praise. And something, it just, and at my church, when you preaching, when you preaching, Everybody leave their seat and they come and hold on to the table while you preach till they back you all the way up against the wall till you ain't got no place else to go till you have to get a chair and stand up and when you stand up they hold it on to your feet and I, they said, I ain't never seen. I said, because these ain't church people. These is people that's done kill people. These is crackheads. These is people, y'all ain't said, these is people that just done learn how to take God at his word because they didn't have nothing else to lean on. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. These are people that's been prostitutes that God done delivered. These are people that's been child molesters. I'm not hearing you. You liable to be sitting next to somebody and this is the truth. A man came to me in my church and, and, and he said, he said, mother, I want to be delivered. And so we started praying for him and God really broke him free and one day I was walking through the church and he said will you hit me and I said what he said will you hit me he said please hit me right now and so I kind of touched him with my fist he said no hit me hard he said hit me hard as you can and I said do you mean it he said hit me like you're gonna knock me out and so when I punched him I said why did you have me to punch me like that he said because you know I didn't kill five people and the spirit of murder was on me today and God just told me if you punch me that God has got to break that thing off of me no see I'm trying to tell y'all you don't understand what I'm talking about we're talking about women that's in our church that's done shut they husbands and killed them. Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hearing you. So when I say uh, that the prophetic word of God says uh, that the water is in the building, they ain't got nothing else to hold on to. And the Holy Ghost told me tonight that some of y'all need to praise God just like that. Because though you in the church, you ain't got nothing else to depend on. And if God don't do it, it won't be done. Somebody give it to him. Give it to him. You got to praise him like that. You can't praise him like you got another choice. You can't praise him like you got another answer. You ain't got another answer. Jesus is the answer. Somebody shout. Jerry, 
you know I'm telling the truth these are people these are people that says see the difference between us the difference between tonight me giving this prophetic word these are people that says I can't not praise him because if I don't I think about how many people I killed if I don't praise him I won't be able to sleep tonight if I don't praise him I'll go back to using crack y'all ain't saying nothing we sitting up in church with our legs crossed like we got another answer you got a need in your life some of y'all is in some real trouble and you standing in here giving God some little sanctified praise when you better open up your prop because it's the violent prayer. Somebody open up. Wait a minute. Submit Elder Boyd. He said to me, You're not out of bounds by talking about the way the people praise God. He said, Because in order for the vestation to take place, this is what the study said, Elder Morgan. In order for the vestation to take place, the regeneration must come in drastically and violently y'all ain't saying that he said that's the reason why Jesus had to go to the cross and it was violent because at the same time he was erasing our sins he was regenerating us and now y'all are hear me and the Holy Ghost said in order for people to receive what you talking about this can't be no church praise because your praise got to be a regenerating praise which means I gotta praise him in a violent way I gotta give him a praise that I don't normally give him because not only am I receiving something I'm erasing something I'm washing something I'm breaking something somebody give God a praise right now if I'm talking to you come on I got to break it 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 something is being broken something is being renewed something is being revived something is being restored somebody give God a shot oh somebody better do it somebody better run somebody better jump somebody better do something in order to get something you ain't never had you gotta do something You better open your mouth. This ain't no play point. This ain't no play point. This ain't no play point. Hey, come on here. Come on. Beat it hard. Come on. I ain't got to repeat the devil. Find the devil. All I gotta do is shout. All I gotta do is praise him. All I gotta do is give him glory. New skin, new mind, new spirit, hey, new ideas, new vision, new promise. Somebody praise him. Us now. We ours. Today, this church, this hour, this season, this time, shout! I can't be denied. I can't be denied. I can't be denied. I was on the calendar. I was on the calendar. I can't be denied. I can't be denied. 
or not? Watch this. Watch this. Now God, now God really getting ready to blow your mind. Sister Tanya, watch this. Elder Boyd, watch this. Pastor Val, everybody. Elder Morgan, Rabina, watch this. This is the honest and God's truth. If you take, when I say we were on the calendar of God, if you take, watch this, and if you don't praise God behind this, then something is wrong with you. You retarded. Because what I'm saying to you, you get me to come into a promise because you were born to be here this day. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You was born to be here this day. You were born to be here during this era. If you take everybody in this place, Pastor Boyd, and you add the year you was born by your birthday, it would be 111, which means on the calendar of God, you was meant to be sitting in this building when the times of the prophetic changed and God began to prophesy that you're coming into the season where he's going to watch over his world to perform it if it wasn't for you you would have been dead and gone but if you make it you find it i'm not giving y'all you better open up your mouth the devil gotta let go of everything he has ever had his hands on you better go to praising him for real You better praise him. You better praise him. Your birth certificate says you entitled to the promise. You better praise him. Today's date says you entitled to the promise. You better praise him. The year says you entitled to the blessing. You better praise him. Father says, you coming into it. Why you praising God? If you don't see nothing, then don't say it. But if you can see it, I want you to look over at your neighbor because the scripture said, you have seen well. In other words, you ain't missing. If you in this building today, and while you was praising God, you saw a vision of where you was trying to go in God, the Holy Ghost said, prophesy to you. The scripture that says, uh, you have seen well. So this next time when you praise him, uh, get your vision in your view. Don't just be talking about, thank you, Jesus. Uh, get what God has said to you. Uh, get the promise in your vision and go to shout uh, because you have seen well. And whatever it is uh, you are looking at, uh, while you praising God, I'm going to watch over my word to perform it. Now somebody give God a prayer. Come on here. Come on here. Come on.
hocus pocus prophecy. You better praise it. Cause this ain't no bootleg prophecy. It's the word of God being linked letter fixer. It's the word of God coming about. It's the word of God landing on the calendar of time. You better give God a praise. You better praise him because you're here. You better praise him when the devil tried to make you leave. When the devil tried to push you out the door. When the devil tried to make you quit. You better give God a praise that you lasted. That you stayed. That you remain steadfast. Somebody give God a praise. I gotta make this last praise clear, Elder Boyd. The last praise, cause some of y'all praising God and I can see that look. I gotta help you. This ain't the praise that said, Lord, I believe you. This ain't the praise, Beanie, that says I'm praising you cause I believe you. This is the praise that I'm praising you because I heard it. Y'all better come over here. You better come over here. This is the praise that because I was standing in the building and it went down in my spirit. I'm not praising you because I believe it. I'm praising you because you said it. Hey! He said, My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall prosper. says elder morgan sister tanya the scripture said if you believe watch this that the lord has heard your petition then it should be done for you it didn't say if you believe the lord so touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor because god said this to me i was in prayer he said if i can hear you cuss say it to your neighbor if the lord can hear you cuss he heard your prayer and if you can just believe that he heard you then he gonna do it y'all better come over here you just gotta believe that he heard it y'all ain't saying nothing you just gotta believe it that he heard your mouth that he heard your voice that he heard you when you spoke it Somebody give God a shot. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you how 
simple it is. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. And this is what I want you to say. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to say, Lord. Lord. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. Do it. Do, it. Do everything. Amen. Now turn around and open your eyes. And ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Did you hear me say that? Amen. Did you hear my voice? Amen. Say, if you heard my voice. Then the Lord just heard my voice. And he didn't tell me to have faith. He told me if I believe. That he heard me. That God. He gonna do it. Somebody telling me else. Give him a job. Hey. If you believe. That he heard you. He gonna do it. one more time just shout out of your mouth Lord do it and when y'all hear did y'all hear each other say that then you better go on and praise him for your neighbor did you hear somebody say that then if you if you heard somebody say it then God heard you somebody better give him a praise in here somebody better give him a praise in here Let me confirm this. Let me confirm what I'm saying, Elder Boy, with this last confirmation. When Jesus, Elder Morgan, spoke to Peter and said, Upon this rock, you, I'm going to build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That was too big for him to believe that. Uh, cousin Peter. And that's why he said, Watch this. So we're in order. When he said, but Lord, help my unbelief. Because there are things that God is going to do for us. That elder boy, he just going to have to awe us. Because we ain't going to never come to the place where we can believe God for something like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The praise that is happening in this building tonight is not just for the petty stuff that you have asked God to do. It is for the awe of God. And y'all come over here. The praise tonight is for the stuff that God gave me to blow your mind. Somebody better give God. He, 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 he. So, so from now on, all I got to do in this season of 27, of a 27 and a 39th year, all we have to do in this building in the 39th year, going into the 40th year, y'all come on somebody, 40 meaning deliverance, come on here y'all, all we got to do is believe, because on their way, watch this, God awed them, y'all better hear me, God, God chose the season of the wilderness to awe them. He let manna fall from the sky while they was in the wilderness. 
Because what I want some of y'all to do to stop talking about it. When, when I get out of this, I'm going to praise God. You better praise him right now. Because there's some stuff that God got to make happen for you in the wilderness. I'm not giving nobody to talk to me. There's some breakthroughs you're going to get while you're in the wilderness. There's some stuff that God is going to all you with while you're in the wilderness. And all he wants you to do is say, though he slay me, not what I trust what he say. Somebody in here, you better open up your mouth and start. Hey! Give me God a prayer. Manna fell from heaven in the wilderness. Still didn't go out in the wilderness. Come on here, somebody. The cloud covered them by day. Fire by night in the wilderness. Somebody give God a shout. Plus nine, Beanie, is 12. And by Friday, the 12s will meet. Yo. Okay, maybe I'm out there. By Friday, the 12s will meet. And we're in it two seasons. Touching and agreeing. Y'all better come over here because you ain't got to believe it because I know what I'm talking about. It will be double 12. It will be double 12, which means both in the natural and the spiritual. It will be resolved and done. Y'all better come over here. It's some stuff that's about to explode on Friday. I can't get nobody to shout with me. I can't get nobody. I can't get nobody to shout with me. I can't get nobody to shout because faith will go hit your life. I can't get nobody to shout because you will have a new mindset. I can't get nobody to shout because you're going to go get it. You're going to go back to what they told you no. And God going to make them tell you yes. Somebody. We walk. I'm done. Twelve disciples, twelve gates, twelve torches. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. The number of establishment. Jesus, Jesus. The ending of the era of the elevens. The ending of the era of the 11th. 11 meaning things unfulfilled. Y'all come on here somebody. When November leaves this time. While the world is waiting for December 31st. Those that are in the spirit is coming into the new year. Somebody better open. Hey, we gonna beat the wall coming in. Somebody better get God to put it. You better get God to put it. You gonna beat the wall possessing it. You gonna beat the wall claiming it. You gonna be 
from all wrong in it. You won't be from all living in it. Somebody open up your mouth. will do nothing nothing except I first watch this reveal it to the prophet somebody said well I'm not a prophet but wait a minute Jesus was and is the major prophet and Jesus lives in you which authorizes you to walk in the prophetic and so it is in divine prophetic order that we enter into the promised realm and region first that's why November the 30th come 12 1 those that are in the spirit of the mindset of the prophet will enter into the mindset of what is supposed to come and while the world is waiting, we're already in the new year. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I didn't hear nobody say nothing. I didn't hear nobody say nothing. I didn't hear nobody say, well then prophets, what do I have to do? He said, right now, start prophesying. He said, until, until y'all come on, come on. Until December 12th, everything you want to see made manifest in the new year, prophesy now. Prophesy before November, prophesy before December the 1st. Because everything you put in the spirit realm, that's what he's going to watch over to perform. Somebody better open up your mouth and give, Lord Jesus, I just, I just wish I had, I just wish I had 21 people in here. 21 people that felt like giving God a crazy praise because you uh, 21 people that felt like giving God a crazy praise I was leaving prayer Tuesday before last and I closed with this and I was going out of the building and the presence of God hit me in the aisle back there I turned around and I looked up and I saw a 12 foot angel standing on that curtain and I started waving my hand you remember that and I said God what is what is that I said, who is that? He said, it's the angel of promise. I said, what? He said, it's the angel of promise. I said, what do you mean? He said, it's the angel that I've sent to drop off the promise. And he said, tell the people, I couldn't make it back to prayer this past Tuesday. He said, tell the people that the angel of promise brought the deed and he dropped the promises in the building. Now y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. No, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. He ain't talking about the new stuff you asking him for. He talking about the stuff he promised that ain't never came to pass. Then dropped in this building. No, somebody better come over here. You better praise him on the promise. If he told you something two years ago. If he told you something a year ago. If he told you something five years ago. If he told you something seven. You better shout now. I'm God. That's what he keeps saying to me. He said, the people done forgot I'm God. He said, the people done forgot I'm God. I'm God and I can do anything. He said, I'm making ways out of no ways. Like right, y'all sitting in this building. He changing your tomorrow. Somebody don't have to, you don't have to believe it, but I got to prophesy it. I said, you ain't got to believe it, but I got to prophesy it. 
He changing your tomorrows. He changing favor everywhere you go. I said he changing your tomorrow. While you praising God today, he changing your tomorrow. I just want my eyes to lay on one person that can receive this. He changing your tomorrow. He already going into your next week. He in your next month. He done already handpicked the people that's going to be your divine connection. I hear the Lord said, you ain't got to travail no more. The hour of travail is over. It's time to step over in the upper thing that I said. Somebody give him a shot. in your tomorrows everything has changed ain't nothing to say I said ain't nothing to say ain't none of y'all the same I said ain't nothing the same other boy ain't nobody gotta believe me ain't nothing the same ain't nothing the same in this building ain't no, even if you're watching my internet ain't nothing the same I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me Cause the Holy Ghost gonna hijack some of y'all sure enough. I said ain't nothing to say Some of y'all that's even just sitting here Hobi Ashanda Messiah He gonna hijack you in your sleep I said ain't nothing to say I said ain't nothing to say He gonna wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning I said everything about you Everything on your job Everything around you Everything has changed I text I text Jerry my sound man and I said tonight I'm gonna shout on what God said if I gotta shout by myself I said because I'm here I'm here at the foundation of the root of it I'm standing back in the place where the Lord decreed it the first time y'all ain't saying nothing y'all ain't saying nothing y'all ain't saying nothing I said everything about this ministry how that old Shende big side I'm talking about a new joy I'm talking about a fresh wind I'm talking about get 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 everybody that's negative away from you get get everybody no you don't hear what I'm saying treat them like the plague because something else doesn't happen there's another joy that's done hit this house there's another praise I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because the testimonies is about to speak through here like y'all ain't never seen before you gotta get yourself ready for an outpouring somebody get called a shot somebody get called a shot Go get it. That's what I hear the Lord saying. Go get it. Go get it. Whatever it is you want, go get it. After Friday, after Friday, reapply. Y'all, I, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be here for Tuesday because I'm going to watch this come to pass. I said, after Friday, reapply. I said, after Friday, go for it. After Friday, go for the vision, go for the promise. I'm not hearing y'all. After Friday, go back to the mortgage company. Go back to the bank. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. God, I wish my church was in here. I know they watching online. The warehouse, you can just praise God because I know we believe it. I said after Friday. I 
gotta go. I gotta go. Jerry. Come get my laptop on. Come get my laptop. I gotta go. Just wanna play this song. See, we tell the people, Rabina, we tell the people at our church, when it's time to praise the Lord, I need to hear you. I need to hear you. You can't sit next to me like that. I need to hear you. I need to hear you. Because I'm desperate. You can't sit next to me and I don't hear nothing. Hold my shit up. Because I need somebody to praise me with me because I'm looking for a miracle. You can't sit next to me. I got to hear you. I got to hear a song coming out of the spirit. Somebody give God a shout. somebody I gotta hear you cause I need a push I gotta hear you I need somebody to help me push help somebody say and somebody say and Beanie somebody say somebody say I don't shout like that I don't holler like that. Well, let me help you with something. I done seen people, elder boy, during the Super Bowl season, tear their dens up. I done seen grown men jump on couches. I done seen grown men paint half of their face blue and the other half yellow for their team. Y'all are hearing me. Y'all are hearing me. Now I'm getting ready. I'm really getting ready to go deep. I done heard the saints scream for Janet. I done heard the saints scream for Beyonce. I done heard the saints yell for Luther Vandross when he was living. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't saying that. I can't get nobody to talk to me. I done seen the same saints throw something at their TV when Usher came on and ripped his shirt off, which says to me, you shout for what you want to shout for. I'm not giving y'all. I'm not giving y'all. And if you ain't got no shout for God, it's because you don't want to shout. I'm not. But if somebody gave you a billion dollars and told you to shout, you would lose your voice. Somebody give God a praise in here. Jesus, help! Help! 
Somebody shout out of your belly. Somebody shout out of your power. Cause out of your body shall flow rivers of living water. It's a night that all things move. It's a night that all things move. It's a night that all things move. Whoa, hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. My God, Jesus. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. How did it is, Sunday? Every area of my life. Down to the portals of time. To this very day and this very hour. It was predestined that I be blessed. That's a, that's did you hear that other boy? Before the foundation of the world was laid, it was predestined that everybody that's in this building right now would be in this building to receive their ordination that says it was predestined and ordained that I am going to be blessed and I'm going to walk in every promise that oh my God All things move. It is the day that my church moved. It is the day that I came here because the foundation of where I came from moved. Hobby, I shall you. Because the mindset of the building moved <laughs> because the promise of God shifted in our hands and I'm not talking about the okie dokie prophecy I'm talking about according to the numbers and the word and the scripture of time he prophesies a truth he said over 20 years is the intelligence is the intelligence of man is when man rationalizes what is the truth and today we decree and declare hey I just felt that we decree and declare what is the truth about us? What is, the, what is the truth about what he has said and what he has done? And the doors that are miraculously, miraculously opening. Because Elder Boyd, upon the research of us traveling, and hear this, if you have not, if you don't understand what I'm saying, then get the tapes from 5 a.m. prayer and you'll get it. When he start talking about the waters, he brought this to my attention for tonight's word. He said, every time Israel left Egypt, 
Pharaoh chased them. But the mistake he made was to let them get to the water. Because when they got to the water, the prophetic anointing that was sitting on Moses gave him the authority to control the waters. To pull them back and command that they come back. Are y'all hearing that? Are y'all hearing that? Which means in this building tonight, the commanding power of God has given us the authority to part it. Y'all come over here somebody. To part it. To go through it. Come on here, watch me. Part it. Go through it. Look over your shoulder at what looks like it's coming after you. And send the water back. You better come over here and give God praise because you don't know what today is. God, I wish I had somebody to really believe. That really believe that today is a prophetic day. Somebody open up your mouth and give God a praise because... Bass Station. Bass Station is taking place because he said, Elder Morgan, that we have entered into the season of Solomon. We have entered into the season where the wars will cease and we will walk in the promise and the authority of God. And I'm here to tell you, I don't care what nobody telling you. When the enemy brings things it's a distraction because he already bound and do not take your head that way because if you turn your eyes from the promise you can't look out over and see because he said if you see it I'll give it to you your eyes got to be dedicated your mouth got to be dedicated you can't let nobody talk nothing around you that ain't got nothing to do with the promise. I love you, but I can't hear that. I love you, but I can't hear that. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Speak the power of God over everything I do. Whatever you gonna help me with, you better be talking the promise. You better be talking the prophetic. Y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. I don't even let nobody park my car that ain't prophetic and anointed. Don't get in my car with all that. Don't touch none of my stuff. Don't help carry my bags. Unless you believe that something is happening at the promise. Come on, somebody. I feel that. You got to keep people all around you. Elder Boyd, you got to keep people all around you. But then you got to keep yourself encompassed about with people that can see the vision. And that can see the promise. I was talking to Dr. Johnson the other day. And it came up in my spirit about the women's conference. I said, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear who don't want it. I said, I see the promise. I see the power. I see it. I see the glow. I see the glory. I see, I see this church in its latter rain. Oh, I'm not hearing that. I see the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. Come on here, somebody. I see the glory cloud falling. I see it. I see the manifestation. I see the refreshing and the renewing. I hear it. Elder boy said to me, you don't know what kind of, you don't know what kind of week it's been. I said, I, of course I do. Because everything led to the 27th. He tried to take you out of here because nobody wanted, tried to take him out of here. Because nobody, nobody in this building was supposed to be eliminated from the 27th. He had to be sitting in this chair on the 27th. In order for regeneration and vestation to take place, the originator of the vision had to be present to erase the old and usher in the new. 
I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. When I walked in this building, and I saw Pastor Boyd sitting there with the mitre on. I said, my God, my God, my God, it's the regeneration and the best station. If you're sitting in this building and you can grab a hold to what you hear, not even what you believe, then you better understand what I understand. That I walk out of this building tonight, and every foe, everything that have tied up, hindered, bound up, y'all don't understand. It's hard for black folk to believe that. It's hard for black folk to believe that you can go through a season where the war is over. And I'm here to tell you today. I just, Elder Boyd, I just wish I had somebody in here that would dare to believe that. The war is over. And when the dumbness start, that's not my war. Because my war is over. I'm in the, y'all come on here. I'm not in a war. Why? Why? Because I'm standing in the building on the 27th and the 39th year. Which decrees and declares prophetically, scripturally, that my war has ended. And the erasing, Rabina, not you get rid of, not you buying, but while I am praising God, for what he is doing and what he is perfecting my praise is erasing from tonight on everybody in this place believe that that my praise is erasing my praise is erasing my struggle Now you could choose to do one or two things. But I told the devil, I told the devil, you won't get another second of my prayer time. I'm not talking to you. You're not getting another minute of my prayer time. When I get ready to pray, I'm speaking what God is speaking. I'm y'all ain't hearing me. I said my praise is erasing. The issue, you better come on here. You ain't got no reason to bind and fight. Your job is to praise. Your job is to give glory. Because when I say thank you, Jesus, that station begins. Whatever the problem is, when I say glory, hallelujah, that station begins because of this day. Everybody lift your hands up in this bed and I feel his presence. I feel his presence. I feel his presence so strong. I feel his presence so strong. So strong in this building. I felt it to the point. Give me strings. I felt it to the point that as, as important as it was for me to be at the church, I couldn't. And I said to my sister, I gotta go to Bethel. I know it's our last Sunday, but I gotta go pick up the next dimension because it is going to be in the building on the 27th. I leave here I do 5 a.m. prayer Tuesday and preach at the prison Tuesday night. I'm going to Logos, Nigeria, and then to London. But the Lord said to me, the reason why you got to go to Africa, because you got to go near the waters. You got to go near where the waters begin to flow. 
he said there's something prophetic and that is the reason why revival is getting ready to be rejuvenated out of Africa and come into America because it has to cross now the waters there has to be a rushing of water that's why even a woman giving birth the water have to break the child has to feel the rushing of water over them before they come into the earth realm do you understand what I'm saying and he said when you come in this building I'm gonna always get mine I remember years ago when I walked in this church first time I ever came in Bethel I was sitting about the fourth or the fifth row from the front pastor boy got up and said a little later right there he said your worst days are behind you your best days are in front of you and many of you all wasn't here but I can remember I remember when the people used to talk about me because I was always running and grabbing the hole to the altar and falling out. Every Sunday, every Sunday I was falling out. Every Sunday, every Sunday I was falling out. Holding on to the rail and at the red church. Grabbing past the boys' robes and everything. They was like, that girl is off. Something wrong with her. When the anointing would get high on him, I would run and grab his feet. And grab his pants. One time he was preaching, walking, and I was just crawling, just holding on to his pants leg. Because I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get mine. And all of that, all of that, coming to Faith Clinic. 12 o'clock noon, when wasn't nobody here, but sometimes me and Pastor Boy, and he'd be talking about a real little lady. Ain't nobody here but me and him. I remember the days when he would say, give an offer, and I would put my shoes on the altar. I didn't have no money. Do you remember that, John? I remember sitting in church with my legs crossed and the holes in my shoes. I remember coming to faith clinic. I remember those days. I remember giving food stamps for offering. Oh, I, bet, I remember going through the McDonald's drive through to get extra napkins just so I could have toilet paper. I remember that. I remember making a vow to God. That God, if you bless me. I remember coming to church with a busted out window. And when it would rain, when I would get to church, the whole side of my dress and everything would be soaking wet. The springs coming up out of my seats. I remember those days. I remember those days being broken, shaking roaches out of my clothes and living in far rock away. I remember those days. I remember those days when I had to run a rat and a mice off of my clothes before I put them on. I remember going down the street with my pull case because I was a flight attendant and didn't even have money to get on the bus. And God would just say, go on to the train station. And I got to the train station and looked down the ground and there was a token. I remember going to work and not even remember how I was going to get back. But I remember living in Far Rockaway. For the first seven months that I was in New York City, listening to my friend and my brother right here on the radio, the voice of Bethel. I didn't even know who this man was. Never heard of him. But I remember getting that little car and God telling me to get this lady a ride to church who was standing on the bus stop in Far Rockaway. And it was below zero rubber with her two kids. And he said, turn around and get this lady a ride. And I said, ma'am, where you going? I said, it's below zero. She said, I'm on my way to church. I said, God told me to give you a ride. I gave her a ride to church and got to church and dropped her off. She said, you want to come in? I said, no. She said, I said, I'm not dressed. I'm in my uniform. She said, you look all right. Come on in for a little while. I walked in the church. And when the man got up, it was the, the man from the voice of Bethel. I said, good Lord have mercy. This is the man from the voice of Bethel on the radio. And I walked in the church and sat down and wasn't in that church 15 minutes and he prophesied to me. And the power of God knocked me out. I remember coming down the volunteer in the office on my off days. I remember all the days that he yelled at me and, 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 and I came downstairs and sitting at the front desk all dressed up. And he come out the door with a bucket and some bleach. And a, and a sponge and said go on in there and clean the bathroom and I said and what I got on he said yeah and then I get to clean the bathroom and he said little later I'm on my way up the steps to the church you got to read for me and I'm smelling like bleach and I'm having to run upstairs and get my stuff to sit down and read for him 
And then church could have them downstairs. And then he said, write a letter and do this and lick stamps and count envelopes and do this. Oh, I remember them days. But I remember them days that I wanted the mantle so bad. That I wanted the anointing of God on my life so bad. I didn't care what I had to do to get it. I remember those days. I remember the days when he got up and said, Little lady, you got to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. I remember the days that I made a vow to God that I would never leave my pastor on the floor by himself. And I don't care what he asked for. God, I was going to be the first one to give it. And I remember that I gave myself out of poverty. I gave myself off of welfare. I remember, oh my God. I remember that I gave. But then not only did I have cars, I was giving cars away. I remember when I got my first car and gave it away. I remember when I got my Mercedes and gave it away. I remember when I bought a, a paid for a cash for a limousine and gave it away. And God ain't never stopped blessing me. And I remember that the Lord does not forget your labor of love. And I remember this. That in the worst season of my life, in the last three and a half years, I've made over $8 million. I remember all of that. Because the Lord does not forget when you operate in faith. He does not forget your labor of love. God will remember when others forget. I remember standing in this building. In the very house. When I went through my season, Elder Boyd. This is my testimony. When I went through my season. And had to file bankruptcy and lost everything I had. I remember the day that Pastor Boyd said, we're getting ready to move in this church right here. And he said, I want every member in this church to vow to give $1,000 and get in line and get an envelope. And everybody got in line. And he said, in 30 days, I want everybody to give it. And the whole church got in line. And they was playing music. And everybody was marching around getting their envelopes. And when he got to me, he said, stop the music. He said, little lady, I'm going to write something on this envelope. And what I write on this envelope is what God telling me to tell you to give. And when he wrote on that envelope and I looked at it, I said, Pastor, don't feel well. Because I'm not finna get no church on $25,000. Not me. And the only $25,000 I know is the one I got for my down payment for my house that I'm moving in in 30 days. I said, no, I'm not giving that. I made up my mind that I wasn't going to give it. And John and Val will tell you two weeks later the deal for the house fell through. I didn't get the house and ended up having to live in their kitchen for almost a year. And God said to me, I said, give it. Because if I don't get a house, you don't get one. I came home, Pastor, you remember that. I went and got a cashier's check. I ran downstairs and met Pastor. I said, Pastor, please take this money. I said, please take this $25,000. Take it. God told me to give it. And then on top of that, watch this. Two weeks after I gave it, Pastor was walking through the hallway. And I said, Pastor, you all right? He had a frown in his forehead. He said, little lady, Pastor, going to be all right. I said, well, what's wrong? He said, they just told me that I need $15,000 more for the sound system. I said, Pastor, wait one minute. I ran to my car and got my checkbook. I said, Pastor, here it is right here. It ain't number but money. I can get it again. Wait a minute. I lost everything I had. And two months ago, my paperwork ended up on a lady's desk. And she said, is this the same one, Anita Bynum, that changed my life? She said, I done petitioned the court and we giving you back your house. The what? No, come on. I, no, yo, you ain't got to praise God for me. I praise him all by myself. And then a week after that, the house that I bought in Maywood, a lady, a man called and said, is this the same one in the body? You know what? We petitioned the court and we giving you back that house too. No, somebody better start praising God. And then the big property that I lost, that I paid $4.2 million for, they called me back and said, we're going to offer it back to you for $1.2 if you want to take it or give us your best offer. I'm going to tell you that when you walk in the realm of obedience, The house 
that God birthed 5 billion prayer in me is the one that God gave me back. The one that I sold for so that we can be in this building right here. God gave it back to me. And he spoke to me in this building. When I tell you that the realm of the supernatural ain't no joke. And I'm not somebody that's standing here saying, well, you get, no, I'm talking about what I see. I'm talking about the miracle doors, things that have happened for me that I can't even talk about yet that is going to make people go, my God, because he said, because you were faithful. Because I was faithful. No, I wasn't no fly by night person that people look up and say, oh, there she going, she famous, she didn't. No, I was faithful. I served in this ministry. And even when I got to the major platforms, I didn't let people park my car and carry my briefcase. I carried my own stuff and I came up here and sat down and got my running shoes. And when pastor would get through preaching and go praying for people, I would put my flesh shoes on and run right out there and pray with him and then get on the road and go and preach and come back and read for him because I'd learned the power of servanthood. And why did I come back here tonight? Because the next dimension is in this building tonight. No, you didn't hear me. I said the next dimension is in this building right now. You don't even know what you're sitting in. And he spoke to me when I was getting dressed. And he said, seven people in this building. Let me tell you something. When God starts speaking in your life prophetically, I don't care what nobody said. I can't tell you. Now, we laugh about it right now. But I can't tell you how many times people say, there she go again. She always getting up giving. always that. But in my heart, I said, I don't care. I don't care what nobody think. I don't care what nobody say. It ain't nothing but money. I can get it again. But what I can't get is a moment. What I can't get back is a moment when God starts speaking. And he opens up a window for you to move in faith and you don't. You can always get it back, but you can't get the time back. And because I sowed the seed when God told me to, the blessings of the Lord is chasing me down and running me over. And all I can do is stand back and say, my God, if it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? My job prophetically is to speak everything God told me to speak. When he told me you were entering into a new season of the prophetic, I didn't question him. He said, your job is to say everything I tell you to say. Set your face like a flint and say it because when you say it, I'm talking to somebody in that building. My responsibility is not how you obey it. My responsibility is knowing that we are in an atmosphere. That a divine presence is in this building. And seven people in this building. The seed that broke my life through. The seed that broke my life through. The first time I gave a thousand dollar seed, I thought I was going to faint. The first... Pastor, do you remember the first time I gave a $10,000 seed and went home and threw up? And I called John. I said, I can't stop throwing up. He said, what's wrong? I said, because I, I just said to myself, I just went crazy. And I just gave all my money. I gave $10,000 in the church. And it was like on a regular night. It wasn't no big program. And I threw up for two days. Because I was nauseous. I was sick. And I thought, oh my God, I'm sick. No, what was happening was I was flipping my spirit over. I was feeding my spirit something it wasn't adjusted to. But I had to break it through to another level. And then I started giving $10,000 like it was $10. And then I started giving $5,000 like it was $5. And then I didn't feel it no more. And then it didn't mean nothing. And then $60,000 and $50,000 didn't mean nothing. Because my spirit had entered into a wealthy place. And money finds me. And it gravitates to me. And I got to do what God said. Give me seven envelopes. Because he said seven people in this building. Is getting ready to walk into a miraculous realm. And I don't have to speak what he ain't saying. 
And he said seven people in this building that obey him and give this thousand dollar seed. You getting ready to see something you ain't never seen before. Because we're standing not only in a new season. In a new time. In a new realm. We in a place now. We. Not y'all. Us. Me. Tonight. We entering. Into another dimension. Of all that God has produced out of new greater Bethel. Since I've been here, I'm a product of this ministry. I went to greatness from this ministry. I went to greatness from the prayer meetings in this ministry. I ain't never fasted without water for 21 days in my life. I remember laying on that bench right there. I had to lay down doing service because I couldn't even sit up. We got our first glass of water on the 21st day. And Pastor Boyd lined everybody up here and said, you're going to get your first glass of water. And it was like drinking a steak. All you can do is brush your teeth, but that's what birthed us out. And in this generation, something else is in this building and I feel it. And you in this building and you know I'm talking to you, get up out of your seat. Because God said you're in this building and he getting ready to take your life to another place. What's a thousand dollar seed when God is talking to you? And he said all seven people are in this building tonight. Come wherever you are and get this envelope out of my hand. Move now because you're in this building. You're in this building. If you got to put it on your credit card, you're in this building. Because he said it's going to be the seed that's going to push you to your next level. You don't know how to get there. Because you get there counting. And you're getting there minimizing God. And you're trying to rationalize it. And what you're saving for, God got a way of making it happen. God got a way of doing it that'll blow your mind. And the Holy Ghost set you in this place and everybody in here just begin to pray for a minute because you're here. You're here. You're here. God said you're here. God said you're here. There's three more people sitting here and I know it. And you saying, you know what? I didn't come prepared to give no thousand dollars. I didn't come prepared to do it. But I'm telling you, I know I feel it. My God from Zion, I feel it. Jesus, have mercy. I know what I'm talking about. You in this building. You in this building. You in this building. Thank you, Jesus. There's 30 people in this building. Give me that envelope. 30 people in this building. God said they're supposed to give $127. Because he's going to break poverty off your life. I'm telling you what I know. I done stood in this ministry 23 years. 23 years. 23. 24 years. Almost a 25 year anniversary. And I ain't never seen God fail. I ain't never seen pastors say God was going to do something and he didn't do it. And you one of those persons get up out of your seat now and come and get this envelope out of my hand quick. And God said the way you move for him is the way he's going to move for you. He said there's 30 people in this building. He is calling to give this $127. Today is the 27. Something is in this day. I know what I'm talking about. Something is in this day. Something is in this day. I feel it. Thank you, Jesus. I feel it. I'm at home. I feel it. I can't move outside of God, not in this dimension, not in this dimension, not in this dimension. There's 10 more of you all that's sitting down, not in this dimension. I'm saving it for something. No ma'am, no sir, wrong time to save it because God is speaking it. I know God is speaking it. I know God is speaking it. And if you in this building said, I don't have 127, but I'm going to come as close as I can to give it. I got 50, I got 25, I got 10. I'm not going to miss the timing of God because there's something in this day. Get up and come and get this envelope out of my hand. I believe it. There's something in this day. There's something prophetic about this day. There's something prophetic about this day. You can ask Elder Boyd, I've said before I can't come and preach. I've said before I can't make it. But this time God said you got to go. Because it's a transfer for everybody. 
Those seven people that's going to give that thousand dollars, come and stand behind me. Because I'm getting ready to pray for you. Those seven people that's given that thousand dollar seed, come and stand behind me. Because I got to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Bottom, I got to give 30. I got to give 20. I got to come as close as I can. I was born and raised Church of God in Christ. And I remember when I walked in this church, more than half of my family stopped speaking to me. They said I had joined a cult and it wasn't of God. And I kept coming. And they would fly in the town and sit in the back of the church and spy on me and go back and say they just be shouting in there and she in some kind of cult and I remember when my father got on the plane and surprised me and came and he walked in this church and he said you will be a fool to lead this church he said the Holy Ghost and the power of God is moving in this church like I haven't felt it since I was a boy he said, it ain't about denomination, it's about the power of God. And he said, the power of deliverance. And he said, you stay here because God going to birth something out in you. And little did I know, I didn't have no idea that God would do what he did in my life. But even so, the word of the Lord to all of us today is he's going to exceed your expectations. My God, my God. I don't think you heard me. I said he's going to exceed. The Bible said he's going to do exceedingly abundant above. That's what he keep telling me. He said, whatever it is you expected me to do after tonight, I'm going to exceed your expectations. I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to show you. The fear of the Lord is about to return to the body of Christ. And I'm going to say it one more time. It's the Hebrew translation means the awe of God. He going to make you go, ah. Oh. <laughs> he going to make you go, ah. Oh. When the awe of God comes, it's going to take you into the knowledge of who he is. And you ain't going to never doubt him no more. Everybody in this building, stand with your seed in your hand. My God from Zion. My God from Zion. Dr. Wilson, we thank God for you. Thank God for you. People of God. Pastor Boyd, I love you so much. Mother Boyd, I love you so much. love you so much thank you Jesus you've been a father in the spirit thank you for your covering thank you for believing in me thank you for praying for me thank you for prophesying over me thank you for fasting for me Thank you for pressing me in. Thank you for rebuking me. Thank you for correcting me. I'm not more than you. I'm an extension of you. I am you. I am you. I'm an extension of who you are. I can never be greater than you. I don't care if I go all over the world. I don't care if I go to places that you've never been. I don't care if I read books that you will never read. I don't care if I know scriptures that you will never know. I will never be more than you. Because you knew God before I did. Everybody in this building, lift your hands up all over this building. Come on, Jerry. Place on you. 
place on you what he has placed on me. The ability to get unimaginable money. The ability to get unimaginable money. It'll find you like it found me. It's the anointing of this house that flows from the head down. Unimaginable money. Supernatural money. <laughs> He'll send people to blow your mind and to sow it to you. And what you thought you're going to have to pay for, I hear the Lord saying free. Free. Doors that's never been opened for you. Even at your age, around the age that I was when I came into this ministry, I place old money on you and the wisdom to get it and the knowledge to know it. I cause your spirit to be a magnet to it. I cause the supernatural realm of this house to bless you the way it has blessed me. And I release it upon you by the authority that sits over my head. And it flows down to you, young woman, for your obedience. Humbly, humbly I do it. <laughs>